And so let's talk a little bit about now. Yeah. So knowing what I've just told you, what would you have to look at? What do you think you'd have to look at in order to figure out how much should I put into this thing as this market's dropping like a brick? What are you talking about? It's down 37%. This market is down 37%. And um, you have companies which are now on sale, definitely on sale. So from what I've just said, what would you, how would you position? Let's say there's one company you want to buy it and it's definitely so one on sale. company, not the index. You're talking about one specific company, company one X, specific company, company, which X. I has met all of my criteria. I understand it. I think it has a great moat. It's not going to go through bankruptcy is my right. estimation, which is <laughs> has like been added lately to the general thought process these days. Right. Um, and I think it's at a good price. Yeah. So you're asking me what else I need to know? What, how would you, let, let's say you want to put in $10,000 into this company. Mm-hmm. So how would you do it? Company ABC on sale at a margin of safety as the market's crashing down 37%. Well, if I'm using your method, I would spend 2500 today. Mm-hmm. And we're not talking about options, so I'll leave that part separate. And right. And then watch, see what happens. And then watch. In... And son of a gun, if the Federal Reserve doesn't come out and say, we'll put in a bazillion dollars and we're dropping interest rates to zero and the market turns around and just goes straight up. Mm-hmm. Now what? Now what? So has it gone yes. past yes. my... It rocketed mar- past. Oh, it's gone. Okay, then that's it. Then I can't buy any more of it. Very good. That's right. Was that like a trick question or something? <laughs> well, it's a little bit of a trick question because what makes that right is a longer view of where this market's going and probably why Warren Buffett's still sitting on $130 billion. Hmm. So as part of looking at this, like for example, when I was talking about the Macondo well with BP, what made me jump on it, even as it was passing through, out, through past the margin of safety, was that the well was getting fixed and it looked like, okay, end of crisis. So there, there definitely was an end yeah, to it. But, but I think you're, it's a little bit two different situations there because the way you sure. described the BP um, price going up was that it had gone up and I kind of don't remember the exact numbers, but it hadn't gone up a huge amount. It had gone up a little bit, like whatever, like what, I don't know what you said, but 29 20%. to 31 or something. Well, yeah, initially. Oh, 20%. It, it went from 27 to 30 to 31. It's about 20%, 20, 15 to 20%. It was, it was booking. Okay. So I guess, yeah, I guess that's the difference. I think if it's like all of a sudden 25% higher, 50% higher, then it's it's gone. Like it's, yeah, it's, it's too its high. Way, and you're moving above the margin of safety, right? But if it's a little bit higher, like that's not going to bug me too much. Right. And so, you know, there's a couple ways to think about this. One is to just go, well, it's close and I need to get loaded up here. I don't want to miss this opportunity. And I have a strong conviction that this emergency is past and we have seen the bottom here. Okay. And then you just try to pile it in there as quick as you can. A second view is this isn't over. And that's the view I had in March. And I think it's the view that Warren had in March. And that is that this isn't over. This is only at the beginning. This is, if we were talking about a baseball game, we are now in the first inning of the baseball game. Yeah. And likely the second and third innings are going to look much better than the first inning did as the federal government jumps in to fix these problems. Um, But as this crisis unfolds, you start to see the wear and tear on the system and you start to see this game is a much, much more serious position than we thought. And I think that's, that's certainly how I was looking at it, you know? And I think I have to say, I, Warren hasn't said, cause basically what he said is, it's just, it could go anywhere. We don't know where it's going from here. Yeah. That's what he said. But that's but also his actions what show his what he actions. actually thinks. Yeah. And I frankly wish we had different views because then we'd have much more interesting discussions. But I we're on the same page. I totally uh, you agree. agree with me here. Yeah. I yeah. think I mean we've been through this like, you know, every podcast since the whole lockdown started. Yeah. Um 
yeah, I think this is going to cause a lot of real economy ripples that yep. all the money the governments are putting out there um, is going to try to help. I'm not sure it can actually help enough. So, and, I, and I, yeah, and I mean, we hope and we will see if it can help. But in, the truth of it is the market doesn't think long term. It never thinks long term. All of these fund managers are thinking about their next quarter and how they will compete against the other fund managers for their next quarter. And if this stock market is, rev if the if companies start coming in with huge earning losses, then everybody's gonna understand that the way you play the game is to follow momentum. And if, if this company is gonna have a bad quarter or a bad two quarters or a bad three quarters, then by the rules of momentum, you need to get out. And you need to get out quickly because all the other fund managers are also going to get out. And when they do, this is going to go down. And if you're the one holding it, then you're going to have a worse quarter than they will. And that reflects badly on your record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so the... But I do think, the, interestingly, right now, it, 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 people have, I think, a little bit started to skip over Q2 in their minds. Like, I think Q2 is going to be a bloodbath, but I'm not sure the market's going to react to it in the way that it typically would. Like, I think people might kind of go like, oh, yeah, we knew that was coming. Let's see what happens in the next quarter. And that's where the real rubber is going to meet the road. Uh, that's pretty good insight. I, I, I don't know if they're going to skip over it in truth. I think they're trying to skip over it in their heads right now. But when it <laughs> yeah. actually happens, it's a little bit like saying, <clears throat> well, we really do expect smoke in the theater. Really do. I expect smoke in the theater next quarter. And I'm just going to stay in my seat. Um, even well, though because, I smell smoke in the theater. Well, because we it's know. It's very hard for them to do we that. We know okay. that the smoke is going to get cleared out. Like, we have all come yeah. back into the theater now, right? Like yeah. we left the yeah. theater because of the smoke and we're all walking back into the theater in a line that is socially distanced. And right. the question is, is the smoke going to start again? And then if it does, what's the stampede like out of the theater? So I think we're all, <laughs> we're all sort of like aware of the smoke and it's not going to come as this huge shock. I mean, you're right. Like who knows, maybe something will set it off and people will start going, Oh my God, businesses lost money. What an enormous surprise. And everybody will freak, but I'm, I'm not sure that. I think it's going to be more like this. <clears throat> I think, you know, everybody's going to be like, are you staying in your seat? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm staying in my seat. Oh, are you staying in your seat? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm staying in my seat. Yeah. yeah. And every one of them knows that <laughs> if, if they get if if somebody gets out of his seat, he might win. <laughs> he will definitely win. <laughs> because because <laughs> if he gets out of his seat, he gets out of the theater. And if this goes down a little bit, he's gonna be able to come right back in, having had a better quarter than me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so they're all gonna be very nervously looking around at what everybody else is doing. And if there's enough bad news somebody's going to start going for the door i think this is actually a perfect analogy <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to see i know they want to stay in their seats but it's so hard to do when the news is bad so we'll see we'll see what they do but for us i think and and i'm 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 thinking i understand what warren's going through and he and charlie haven't bought any stocks at all um is that the news is going to be difficult on uh, a lot of consumer oriented companies. And when it is, they're going to be in deep trouble and they're going to come into Berkshire in many different kinds of ways. And so Berkshire is, as Warren said, setting itself up to be Fort Knox. Mm -hmm. um, and it just wants to be able to perform like Fort Knox in an emergency. And, and so I think we should take a lesson from that. Number one is that, you bought in with one tranche on this company, then it moved up. And instead of loading up the truck as it moved up, <clears throat> you want to preserve your emotions for a big downward push in the market. And that means just be patient that it takes a long time. It takes three or four quarters for a full bear market to unfold. And during that whole time, the market will be ratcheting itself up and then dropping and ratcheting up and dropping. And the full extent of a, of a big bear market move here 
would be more in the range of 50% down, not 30% down. So <clears throat> I wouldn't worry right now that you missed something. I would, I would be concerned that uh, you just stay patient and try not to do anything. And remember to tranche into these positions over time. And, you know, if the whole thing takes off and runs for a while, it's not going any far. It, it just, it's so overpriced right now, it's absurd. And so I can't, I just can't imagine it keeps going up. But, you know, I've been wrong for, you know, a couple of years here. Yeah. So we'll see All what right. happens. You guys, if you enjoyed this video and you feel it was valuable in teaching you more about how to invest, hit the like button and please share the video with your friends. And if you want more investing content, subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to click the button on the screen. We got a free gift for you. Thanks again for watching.